All right, just want to start out by saying um, and we, we play on the 20th anniversary of 9-11 this uh, Saturday. And as part of our uniform on our uh, helmets, we're going to be wearing this uh, Never Forget 343 decal. It's honoring the 343 first responders who gave their life on 9-11. Um, an opportunity for us to say thank you to those brave souls and to their families for the sacrifices uh, that they've made and to represent truly uh, uh, some heroic individuals from that day. Um, reviewed the game film from week one. Um, we're really fortunate to be 1-0, uh, and there's a lot of room for improvement. In fact, it's the biggest room in a house is room for improvement. So we're, uh, you know, worked on that and uh, know that we have to improve substantially in a lot of different areas uh, in order to uh, raise our level of play. Got a tremendous opponent, first SEC road game uh, at night in a going to be a, a, row, a loud and raucous environment uh, versus a tremendous opponent. Uh, got a lot of respect for Coach Stoops uh, in the way he's built that program. Uh, been there for, I believe, it going on his 10th season um, and has developed. Not only has he uh, changed the perception of that, that program, um, he recruits at a high level. He develops his players at a high level. You look at guys like Josh Paschal, um, who are just you know really, really good players who were developed by him, recruited by him. And so got a lot of respect for him. Um, they did an outstanding job in the transfer portal this year. Obviously, I mean, Crud, they added basically four NFL players or, or three NFL players on offense and an NFL offensive coordinator. And so they've They've gotten really good, really fast offensively, and then defensively, they've always been good. I mean, Coach Stoops does a tremendous job. They're the number one defense in the country uh, right now after last week, and and uh, has always been very good on defense. Very solid special teams. Got dynamic returners. Uh, still trying to replace the punter from last year, the Australian. And so, um, a lot of respect for them. No, we got our hands full. Um, you know, offensively, the quarterback is really the straw that stirs the drink. Um, the, the transfer from Penn State, Will Levis, uh, I think he threw for about 360 yards last week. Uh, really has a nice, uh, you know, hard play action. Throws a ball down the field. You can tell the offensive coordinator does a great job of setting up his plays. Run and pass look exactly the same. They protect when they launch the ball. Uh, number one, um, I believe it's Wendell. Uh, is the transfer, Wendell Robinson, the transfer from uh, Nebraska, is a dynamic playmaker with elite speed. Um, Complements their other wide receiver, Josh Ali, uh, really well. So they're very talented across the board. Their offensive line is considered by some to be the best offensive line in the country. It's bookended by two NFL tackles with Dare Rosenthal at left tackle and the Kincaid uh, young man at right tackle, I believe. and, and um, yeah, Darian Kennard, uh, sorry, Kennard. Um, so big, big, tough opponent, big challenge for us. With that, I'll open up for questions. I know it's one game, but how different was the offense you saw out of Kentucky than, than what you saw last year when they kind of had the reputation to uh, protect the ball and, and run it a lot? They had 560 yards, I think, and 420 of them through the air. I think last year they had 35 total plays, maybe you know, and maybe 35 through the air. So totally different style, totally different feel, um, executed at a high level, uh, shifts, motions, formation, yeah, vertical shots, uh, intermediate uh, middle field throws, quick game, got the whole, I, the only thing that's a surprise to me is how quickly they've gotten it to where they're at. You know, sometimes when you come in as a new offensive coordinator, so it makes such a drastic change. It's kind of hard to get it in that quickly, but I mean they're they're humming on all cylinders right now, and and uh, obviously it helps when you add some great players like they've been able to add. Chris, do you like going right into SEC play right out of the gate, or would you rather have a little bit more time? After last year, I don't think it matters, man. Just let's get this party started. Uh, you know, I think it's going to be a challenge for us. Obviously, it's the first time for me to get to experience. Uh, with these guys on the road with the raucous crowd. And, and that's a, a huge concern for us, just handling uh, the mechanics of that communication and, and handling the nerves and, and uh, you know, not letting the crowd dictate how we play. So we're going to have our work cut out for us and see what we're made of. When you look at Kentucky, what makes them the number one defense? 
I think it starts with their defensive line. I think they've got three returning starters. Uh, you know, Marquinn McCall started against us last year, and he, he was he was very difficult for us to block. We had our hands full. Um, Josh Paschal uh, is an outstanding defensive end, has speed to power, plays a four eye, can play a five, play off the edge. Jordan Wright played against us last year. Um, you know, big, long. Coach Stoops does a great job recruiting length in their odd defense, which uh, is is really tough to go against because it's just it collapses lanes. Um, their line, both their linebackers are back. Their two safeties are back. I mean, the only guys that aren't there are the guys that got drafted. So it's pretty pretty tough defense. Good scheme, really good scheme. Play hard. Uh, don't make a lot of mistakes. Make you beat them. Um, I mean, obviously we rushed for 200 yards, which was good, but uh, we had too many negative plays, um, and we, you know, we can't allow front side penetration on some of our zone schemes and, and some of our double teams. Um, so, I think for all of us, it's a concerted effort to eliminate negative plays, which put us in third and longs. Um, and then, you know, when you go on the road, it, it's a trench football game, and, and if you got any shot at winning football games in the SEC, you've got to win in the line of scrimmage. Especially on the road, you got to be able to run the ball when you want to, uh, not when you have to. And so, um, you know, we we got a, a big challenge ahead of us on that. Eli, what about your, your defense on Saturday? Obviously, picked up in the second half. First half, what concerned you? Any kind of red flag tackling or things like that? I mean, there's a lot of red flags. Um, I, I think it starts with tackling. Um, our tackling was was very poor. Um, I think we had some eye discipline issues. Um, you know, guys in man to man. Um, who, you know, let their guys cut loose. It may not have shown up on tape, but it's going to show up if we don't fix it. Um, you know, we had some, some loose coverage, supposed to be inside technique. We were lined up outside, supposed to be outside technique, lined up inside. Um, so, so things like that that have to get corrected that result in explosive plays. I think overall from Saturday, I think the biggest disappointment was tackling and explosive plays. I think the most uh, exciting thing was the the sacks, the pressure on the quarterback, and the turnovers. Um, but it can't be Jekyll and Hyde. Uh, otherwise, against a team like what we're fixing to play, that scoreboard's going to light up real quick. I think Makai Wingo led, led all the defensive tackles a number of snaps. Was that the idea going in, or did you see did you, did it just kind of unfold that way? Did you see something out of him? I think he's done a really good job of staying in shape, and obviously bigger guys – uh, tend to lose their wind a little bit faster, and he's more of a, uh, a sudden uh, young man. And I think, you know, he was playing really well. So um, you got to keep with you stick with the guys that are performing, um, and he performed really well. And he's going to continue to to get opportunities as he seizes the opportunities in front of him. Eli, you mentioned September 11th, and you might have told this story last year, but do you remember where you were September 11th, 2001? And yeah, I was in Arkansas Tech University. I was uh, in a um, physical science classroom auditorium, and uh, uh, professor walked in uh, maybe a couple minutes late, told us what had happened, and canceled class. And uh, I walked back to my dorm, watched coverage. I actually, had my car was in the shop in Little Rock, and had to drive. Uh, somebody took me to Little Rock to pick up my car, and I remember the gas lines, you know, and the gas stations were really long. And man, it was a it was a scary day, scary day. You know, every game is important, obviously, but Kentucky and Missouri, whichever one this game has always finished higher than the other one. Just that makes sense. Yeah, but, <laughs> but the, relative to this division and where your programs are, just how big is this game? They're all big. I mean, they're all big. Um, you know, I, obviously last year was a big game for us uh, because we hadn't beaten them in five years. And I think getting that uh, off of our chest was good. I, I think it's um, – I mean, Coach Stoops has been there for ten years. Ten years. Recruited at a really high level and developed his players. Um, so to try to make a comparison, us and them right now, I think is a little bit soon. I think we – Got to control who we are. We got to do what we need to do. Go on the road. Um, 
I mean, I don't think anybody's season ends after week two, regardless of how it plays out. I think it's a big test for us uh, on who we want to be and how we want to perform and what what we want to do on the road, which we didn't play particularly well last year on the road. I think we had one road win. So I think for us, it's more about a test to see how much we've grown and developed. I don't look at it as this is a, a, a whether where Kentucky's program versus Missouri's program is. Uh, I think that's making it probably a little bit too big. Um, I think it's a big test for us on the road uh, to play in front of an SEC crowd early in the season. And we're going to find out all kinds of issues that we got to get fixed. We're going to find out how much improvement we made from week one. And regardless, if you win, uh, you're 1-0 you're in SEC with seven to go. And if you don't, um, I, you know, I don't, I don't remember, but I, I don't think – well, maybe Florida was undefeated in the East last year. But most of the time, the East winners aren't undefeated. Uh, third downs. Can you elaborate a little bit more on, on what exactly on third downs like We got to throw completions. Yeah, I mean, we were one for two for 12 on third down conversions. So we got to be much better on third downs. And that's that's me, that's him, that's everybody. But uh, that was really the only thing I was concerned with. <laughs> I, yeah, I don't know. Maybe, you know, I don't. I can't speak to probably what the future is going to be. I, I worried about Kentucky here coming up, and and um, I mean they have transfers that aren't from smaller schools that are big time players from them. So I don't know. I don't think anybody can predict what the transfer portal is or isn't going to be. I think we're all just kind of reacting to it instead of trying to figure out the trends. I mean, it's important for us to get the ball to, to whoever the play is designed to, to get the ball and, and to execute. Um, I mean, Mookie is a is, is a got great speed and, and dynamic playmaker, but um, the play doesn't care who makes it. So whether it's Mookie's design play or if it's not, um, we just got to go execute. Um, I didn't see any rust. Um, I think there was one jet towards the end when the ball came out and went out of bounds. But other than that, I mean, I thought he did a nice job of trying to evade, you know, avoid tackles and, and secure the football. And, and uh, wish we'd have got him more space. Wish he'd have made a different cut on one of them. But I didn't have any concerns. I don't think he did either. I think my biggest concern was that he felt comfortable on his from his injury, which I think he did. Getting new wide receivers, their advantage from the guy who's been here, I believe, five years now. Just what's been your overall impression of him as a veteran leadership? Yeah, I mean, absolutely exactly what you said. Veteran leader who's consistent in his approach and whatever task we assign him, he's uh, a master of those details and, and executes it at a high level. Um, plays to his strengths, plays to our team's strengths, and uh, somebody that we're very fortunate to have on our team. Well, we've got fans, you know, and I think they're calling for a sellout, so we got to work noise. Um, and, and, you know, that's that's totally different. You know, last year you could you could yell out on the field and make play call adjustments, you know. Um, this year I don't think we'll have the ability to do that. Um, obviously, the, 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 the planes, trains, and automobiles is a little bit different. Of course, we've got a little bit of a snafu because of the Columbia Airport being under construction right now, so we're having to um, – change our travel um, a lot relative to what it's been. So that's going to be interesting to see how we uh, adjust to that adversity. Um, but other than that, I think it would still be the same. And we'll still wear masks and do the things that we need to do to protect ourselves and those around us. Sorry, I don't know how much uh, detail you want to give. But do you need to change times or do you have to leave from somewhere else? Or? 
yeah, we got to leave them somewhere else. We're, we're potential can have. I think some of us can leave. Well, it's just a, it's. I'll let Molly do a press release because it's a long story. But yeah, most of us, half the team or or half the travel party's got to go out of St. Louis. Some of us got to go out of Columbia. Potentially, none of us can fly back into Columbia, depending on the weather and the weight limit on the plane. And so. Coach, what did it, Coach, what did it mean to you last week to get to reward uh, Chance May with a scholarship? Yeah. Um. I mean, Chance is just a, a great young man who works really hard, uh, has battled through, um, you know, walk on life, right? Like, is there ever light at the end of the tunnel? And, and has been a tremendous asset to our football team throughout the spring, summer, fall camp, has done everything we've asked him to do, gives us great looks, coaches the other players, embraces his role, and, and – um, you know, when you're you're that age, and maybe you get asked to do something that that you don't want to be doing, like you're over there maybe doing scouts or whatever, it's easy to fall into this "woe is me." Why am I doing this? Do I even want to be out here? And man, he had an incredible week of practice. Like, gave us an, a a tremendous look. Um, and it, when you see somebody respond in that way, you just want to reward them. And um, you know, we had the ability to do that, and that's what we wanted to do. Yep. Coach, did you play the game at Kentucky before and previously as an assistant? I did, 2010, um, when I was at Auburn. We went there week five, maybe. Maybe it was week five, maybe six. Um, got out to a big lead. Uh, I think Joker Phillips was the head coach at that point. Got out to a big lead. They came back, tied the game, had the ball with 743, something like that. Drove it the length of the field, kicked a field goal with no time left to beat him 34-31, I think, was the final. Um, great crowd. Um, good atmosphere, tough place to play. When, when you talk about Mark Stoops, uh, yeah. what do you really respect about maybe the way he goes about his business, his coaching style at Memphis State? Well, I think he had a plan, um, and he's executed his plan since he's been there, which it started with recruiting. Uh, there was an article the other day about how well he's done recruiting the state of Kentucky, which, um, you know, obviously I think starts first, and then he's he's – expanded that and recruited more of a, a, a Midwest team instead of always going down. He's identified areas that can help them. He does a great job in Florida, but he also recruits uh, Detroit really well, Michigan really well, uh, some of the Big Ten areas. Um, and so he's he knows who he is and who he's recruiting. And then you look at his team in, in the way they have developed players. I mean, five drafted players last year. Um, they're always fundamentally sound. They don't beat themselves. They're in a lot of football games. Um, he's got a great record in one-score games. Um, you know where you, that to me is when you, as a coach, really got a coach, right? It's one-score football games, and, and uh, he does a really nice job in those. And and so, you can tell he's got an overall sense of how the game's going to play out in offense, defense, and special teams. I think he's made bold moves, you know, obviously last year changing the offense and looking at what that's been. Uh, you know, he started out spread wide open when he was there and then uh, after Neil left, kind of raked it back down in, controlled the clock, played great defense, kept himself in games. Won 10 games, I think, a couple years ago, was playing in late November to win the East. I mean, that's pretty impressive. Um, second longest tenured coach in the SEC. Uh, it's hard to do, man. I mean, it's about two years, and we get shipped out of here. So he's done a heck of a job. You talked a lot last week about not being able to be sure what to expect. After, with a week of, of kind of data points now, do, does the rotate, do the rotations get refined a little bit going into week two, or do you expect to, to kind of play as many guys as, as you played last week? I think it's still really early in the season to – limit reps. I mean, I think maybe in key situations you're going to see the guys that we know need to play, but we still got to develop our team. You know, we're early in the process. I can't lose the, the force for the trees, right? I mean, it's week two of the season. It's a long season. It's going to be a physical season, and, and we're going to have to make sure that we got young guys ready, these freshmen. Um, we're going to have to make sure that we're developing our players and, and get road experience. And so, I mean, I think one of the regrets I have from last week is not playing enough guys. Um, and so, you know, I, I definitely think we're going to continue to play more players. I think in 
key situations you'll see key guys, but other than that, you know, I think we got to continue to rotate. Um, I mean, I thought both of them had good plays and bad plays that we got to learn from. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think both of them will play again. I don't, I don't, I like being fresh in the offensive line. I think Luke Griffin's done some really good things. I think he could see himself rotating in. I think, uh, uh, obviously Zeke Powell, you know, is right there ready to go too whenever we need him. So I, I, I think there could be all kinds of rotations. Um, Coach Johnson runs that thing like a basketball team. You look up and there's guys rotating in and out. You never know quite who your five's going to be, so it's good. Did you expect 25 carries from, from Tyler Beatty each week you know, after the game? You kind of joke and half joke and say he's retired, but uh, is that something golf you're used to? Well, I mean, if he wants to be the, the man. I mean, it's going to take what it takes to win. If it takes 25, it takes 25. Last year against Kentucky, I think our guy had 34. So if it, it takes what it takes, if he wants to be the guy and he's ready, he's ready. If he's not ready, then we'll put somebody else in there. But, um, yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't have a pinch count on him. He's got to touch the ball a certain amount of times in order for us to be successful. He's a dynamic playmaker for us. And however we can get it to him, we'll get it to him. How impressed were you with Elijah? I mean, the one play that, that Tyler did have to come out going in there and, and break off the 30-yard run. Well, it was funny because we, we'd given him a handoff. Maybe I think he had already had two handoffs and, and hadn't really done, you know, hadn't really able to get going. And uh, on the headset loop, said, "Hey, this is it. If he's not going, we'll put another back in there." And then he takes it and scores. So I don't know if maybe Loop had a headset into him too and got him going. But uh, now Elijah has been very good player for us and, and had a really good spring. And, and and we knew it last year. Tried to make sure he got a couple of reps. Uh, you know, on a couple of different things throughout the season just to make sure he was ready for us. And he's a very good complimentary back to Tyler and, and uh, has, runs really hard, has great speed and, and good vision. So um, really for us, we got to figure out who that third back is going to be that can really um, offset those two guys. And, and that's that was the only position that, that we wish we would have got some more guys in there.